Good morning, Dave. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'm with Dave Devia with the Rocky Mountain Mechanical Contractor Association. Um, uh, Dave, would uh, love for you to tell us about RMMCA. Sure. Thanks for coming in and thanks for having me today. Uh, Rocky Mountain MCA is a, a larger trade association. We've been around since uh, the 1870s, uh -huh. uh, serving Denver um, and the mechanical and plumbing trades. Um, I've been here for about 17 years. I have the privilege of serving as their EVP and CEO. We have about 170 members up and down the Front Range on the Western Slope and up and through Wyoming. Uh, we uh, have a great team of, uh, there's four of us on the Rocky Mountain MCA side. We started a college a couple of years ago, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, to really kind of transform our apprenticeship training programs into being able to offer uh, college degrees as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, I'm really excited as well, Dave, and uh, everything that you've accomplished in the last few years is absolutely outstanding. Um, you've been such a great supporter of contractors in the area. Um, could you let us know how you how you work with contractors and the unions in the, in the Colorado space? Sure. So my members are the employers, the contractors, and like I said, we have about 170 of those within this trade association, uh, from people of one and two uh, person shops all the way up to you know, four, five, six hundred people in the field and everywhere in between. Uh, so we do four things, uh, really five things. Um, we do workforce education and development. We do advocacy, so working at the state level and municipal level on codes and ordinances and bills. Uh, we work on uh, um, labor relations, uh, which I'll uh, touch on here in just a minute. And then we do a lot of member engagement uh, across multiple different avenues. So labor, uh, we work with five different labor unions, all on the UA side, plumbing, pipe fitting. Uh, there are four here in the state of Colorado and one up in Wyoming that we work with and partner with. Um, I would tell you, Mark, I think we have the best uh, labor management relations of any organization across the UA MCA's footprint. Uh, it's something we've been working on since 2012, not long after I arrived here um, because we needed to have a better fundamental and collegial way to deal with each other and work on the hard problems that face the industry. I, uh, I completely agree with you actually Dave. Um, uh, we're signatory of 27 locals nationwide and I'm, I'm really, really impressed with uh, the labor relations that you have here in Colorado. It's really uh, outstanding. They are uh, a good group of guys and gals. We're committed to making this industry the best it can be. Uh, I was looking back at our hours reports, so those are the number of hours in the field worked. And in the last 10 years, we've almost doubled the number of hours here. Uh, part of that is because, you know, in 2012, it was a recessionary period. Uh, we're coming out of one, uh, but more it's the dedication and focus, laser focus that we have on making this a better working relationship and focusing on going out and growing our collective market share. If I could, uh, if I could uh, uh, maybe uh, posture for a second, what, what, do you, um, what do you feel are some of the key um, strategic elements to building a, a healthy relationship with, with labor? Well, we each have to understand where we're at. Uh, you know, when I started uh, embarking on this uh, um, kind of goal of trying to deepen that relationship, you know, most trades folks that are in leadership positions get that way by election and not by training. And most of the folks that work in the office get there by training and not election. Uh, and so you gotta reconcile those two and build upon that uh, and learn how you talk to each other and be able to understand. Uh, we were given two ears and one mouth for a reason. Uh, and so you got to do more listening than you do talking. I love that. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, so coming in from maybe a, a, an open uh, perspective and an accepting perspective, uh, yeah. starting starting at the table. Absolutely, and you have to understand where the other person's coming from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, in every industry there are people that are bad actors, uh, but in our industry that is very few and far between. Um, we got to understand what the labor leaders need uh, in order for their uh, respective memberships to feel valued, part, uh, feel part of the partnership, be able to put them in a position for success, and vice versa. We have to teach labor folks what it takes to make a dollar and where we have to go and evolve to in order to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, technology, as you know, Mark, is changing so rapidly. I, I believe that technology is going to change 
more in the next five years than it probably has in the last 150. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to learn how to evolve, how to embrace that, uh, and be able to work on that as a collective partnership. It's not about, this was my job today, tomorrow it's not gonna be my job. It's about getting a job as a team and being able to figure out what each other's roles are gonna be and how that's different, mm -hmm. say, in a year from now than it is being done today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, Dave. And, and one of the uh, one of the accomplishments of many that you have in the past few years, which is a really strong partnership with uh, the labor uh, in the union, is uh, a college that you've been working on collectively together. Um, could you share with us what that um, what what the college is, what the goal of the college is, and um, how much work has been done to to get to where you are and what you see for the future with that college? Yeah, this is something we're pretty excited about. And again, this came out of our labor management relations, and we do strategic planning a couple times a year where we sit down and tackle the tough subjects. And one of the things that we started focusing on is today's college for all model uh, is one in which where we don't really compete because a trade school may have been pulled out of a high school or you know visibility to the trades or hands-on learning may have been pulled out and extracted either for budgetary reasons or because uh, of uh, risk reasons. And so kids you know, in the K-12 system only see one path, and not everybody is built for college. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out how do we recruit tomorrow differently than we have. Mm -hmm. um, and if you know, students and parents don't see their, themselves in a profession, they're not gonna pursue it. Mm -hmm. And how do we compete with the valedictorian and the salutatorian in the top of the class? And what we decided is we've got one of the best kept secrets in the country, which is apprenticeship, uh, and the earning potentials that go along with that, and the fact that we can take someone with no experience, start paying them today, and put them in school, mm -hmm. and teach them a trade, um, is, is something that's a gift, mm -hmm. uh, and do so tuition free. And so we embarked on a goal to turn each one of our apprenticeship centers into a college campus, so students are concurrently or duly enrolled both in the trade school but also in a higher ed institution mm -hmm. with the ultimate goal of being able to issue an associate's degree once that student completes their apprenticeship program. Right now we have programs in plumbing, pipe fitting, HVAC, and sheet metal, and we're hoping to add electrical here soon to really build out an MEP or mechanical electrical plumbing suite wow. of students uh, to supply the industry. I mean, the bottom line is by 2030, we're going to need 50,000 more construction workers in Colorado. Currently, we have 185,000. Uh -huh. um, we're going to have, uh, we have about 20% of our current employees that in this industry are 55 years of age and older. So that 50,000 doesn't account for the folks that are going to be retiring here. And you know my uh, my back and napkin math says our industry in this state is going to need about 13,000, 10,000 students more more workers in our space. And the only way we're going to do um, uh, grab those students and be successful is to kind of a, adopt a model of you know all the above from a recruiting perspective. And we think that this college that we've started is a game changer. Uh, we'd encourage any of your viewers to go online and look it up, Western States College of Construction. Um, and uh, we're really fortunate. We hired the department head who was leading Colorado State University's construction management program as our president. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been on this path for a couple, about three years now. Um, just uh, the end of last month, uh, the last of our locations got approved by the state. Uh -huh. So now we're recognized at the state level and s we hope soon they'll be approving our degree. Um, our pilot starts here uh, in about a month uh, where we're gonna take all our students through the additional academic teachings that they're gonna need to get that associate's degree. That's absolutely astounding, Dave. And I, and I always admire um, yours and your colleagues' ability to see into the future and address the need today. Uh, and, and look at what, how do we address what's coming down the road. In fact, your, your team just worked on uh, this economic impact study for, for Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I know you mentioned a couple of the data points about the need for uh, trained and, and skilled labor in the coming years. Um, what other key takeaways do you have from this, uh, from this report? Well, uh, we uh, you know, contribute as an, uh, as an industry about 6% to the state's GDP. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, for every dollar spent in construction in this state or service, uh, it generates 17 new jobs and returns two and a half times to the economy. And so that tells you that what we're doing uh, is very important. Uh, as you know, Mark, from, from your business dealings, I mean, this industry is critical to providing fresh drinking water, electricity to homes, uh, and being able to heat and cool uh, any building that we're in. And so that, that's something that's not gonna go away and certainly won't be offshored. So we need viable workers. We need to train those workers here uh, locally and be able to deploy them to our 170 members. Wonderful, and I'm, I'm glad that you're working so closely with your, your colleagues, politicians, and union labor relations to make that happen. It's incredible. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a rewarding career. It's something I never saw myself in, uh, but here I am 17 years later. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for your service. Um, uh, as we wrap up here, just looking into the future, um, what are some, some goals that you have for, for the year? And, and also, um, uh, what do you see as the future for, for the industry when it comes to um, uh, whether it be employment or technology or otherwise? So I think there's a couple of different things. I mean, goals for the organization, we are going to hopefully fully implement uh, our college. Uh, when I say hopefully, uh, we are committed to getting it done. Um, you know, we're playing in higher ed space a little bit. Uh, and so kind of working through that, because uh, traditionally apprenticeship programs live in the Department of Labor at the U.S. Uh, level um, and you know higher ed's higher ed and so really w our college wscc or western states college of construction is building a bridge between the two federal agencies uh, and so navigating that takes a little bit of art and finesse uh, so that's that's one thing that we're working on um, we've uh, got you know a good boots on the ground program to help uh, recruit and um, bring folks into the industry that are either in it or transferring in from a relatable industry because workforce uh, problems don't seem to be going away and the shortage that is needed in the construction space. Um, and I think from a technology perspective, one of the things that we're going to have to really focus on is if we need 10 to 13,000 people, we're not going to be able to graduate that number of people say 3,000 a year for the next seven years to be able to get there because you're going to have some folks that just decide this isn't for them. So we're going to have to embrace technology like we've never done before um, and really be able to uh, let technology help us deliver the same quality project that we have and produce today, tomorrow, but thinking about it differently. Um, and you know, change isn't easy and culture shifts are hard. Uh, and so I think my job here really is to kind of help paint the future and navigate the, uh, the political and uh, the, the, the uh, landscape to be able to make sure that everybody kind of gets on board because those who don't, I think, are going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's, we, we can't have that. We need everybody rowing the boat in the right direction. That's incredible, Dave. And uh, based on me getting to know you over the last few years, I have full faith that you and your team are going to be able to make this happen and you're going to help Colorado grow and be successful. Um, really appreciate your time, Dave, so much and your partnership and you're so dedicated and committed to your membership base. Um, I admire you so much and I really appreciate your time. Thanks. I appreciate BEM Designs for being a great member. Appreciate your leadership. Um, I'm humbled to be asked to be here today. Uh, and so thank you for that. And I wish you the best of luck uh, here in Denver at your conference. And can't wait to see you again. Awesome. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks. Yes, sir.